every UFC champion's biggest flaw, their biggest weakness, their kryptonite. Obviously, all of these guys are elite fighters, some pound for pound number one type fighters, but they all definitely do have weaknesses, and we're going to point them out today. We're going to go all the way from the 125 pound division of Pantosha all the way up to the 260 pound division of with John Jones, my goat. He also has a weakness. But before we do, make sure to like, sub, do all that YouTube shit. It really, really does help me out. And uh, yeah, let's get right into the weaknesses. Starting off with the 125 pound division, we have Pantoja. For me, this is a guy that's well-rounded. He's got good striking, good wrestling, you know. There's not one thing that you could easily, easily point out here. One of the things that I do have down is his defense. Not his wrestling defense, but his striking defense. He does get clipped. He does get hit, and you do see him hurt. In most fights in that Moreno fight, we saw him, you know, he was hurt for a while. And the next thing is his cardio. His cardio is just a little bit, you know, you do see him get tired in fights. We saw him get tired in that Moreno fight. We saw him get tired in that Moreno fight. By round two, I thought that he was gassed after his amazing round one. And I know it's a little bit unfair to say, because obviously he came back round three, round four, round five, and looked good. But he does look to be really, really tired in there. Some people just have that appearance where they look really tired and they're not. But obviously, when I'm looking at him, I'm thinking he's tired going into those rounds. You know, the hands are down, which contributes to the striking defense but for me that's his two biggest weaknesses his striking defense and his cardio onto the 135 pound champ in sean o'malley this guy obviously is a lights out striker he's elite elite on the feet so his problems come on the ground his striking defense you know everything's pretty good up there but his wrestling, his wrestling is somewhere where you definitely look to expose it. His jiu-jitsu isn't bad, obviously, with his coach, Tim Welsh. You know that he's working on his Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So I think that his jiu-jitsu should be okay. We haven't seen it showcased. But I think that if you're looking at a game plan to beat Sean O'Malley, what's the one thing you, you can get at? It's partially probably his gas tank. We haven't seen his gas tank tested for that 25-minute level like we have seen some of these other fighters. But definitely his wrestling. His wrestling is going to be subpar compared to the rest of the division just because he doesn't have that kind of elite elite base in wrestling so to some of the other better wrestlers or better jujitsu practitioners we're gonna see a weakness in his game right there after that we have 145 when you get to volkanovsky you get to makachev it's really really difficult to find a weakness in their game because they're so well-rounded so good at everything for volk it's one of the ones that i have that's outside of the cage it's his impulsivity for me his need to take a fight i think that the fight against islam the second one was a mistake taking it like that we, he needs a full camp especially when he's going up a weight and he's going back from 145 up to 155 again it was a bad decision to take that fight short notice and that impulsivity got him stung there by a really really good guy in islam akachev and we could see it come back and haunt him again when he fights against Ilya Taporia because he's taken that pretty pretty close off a knockout it's five months ish off a knockout a lot of the time we hear fighters that get knocked out say you know i'm not mentally ready for a while i need to retrain myself i need to let my brain rest so i think that once again that impulsivity that need to get in the cage could hurt him once more but apart from that he's a pretty pretty flawless fighter after that we have have Islam Makachev. The one thing for me here, great wrestling. He's got decent striking. And the one thing that people think that Islam Makachev has unbelievable striking. It's not really that his striking is that good. It's that his wrestling is so unbelievably good that his striking just it sets up his striking that much easier because you're always like thinking, wondering like, wh when's he going to shoot? When's he going to shoot? I've got to defend this takedown. I've got to defend this takedown. So it opens up holes in your striking defense for him to land a head kick like he did against Volk. But for me, it's his gas tank. His gas tank against Volk in that first fight. Obviously, Volk sets, sets an incredible pace, but Islam's gas tank did look to be weary. In that fifth round, obviously, Volk finished on top. He was doing loads of good work. That fourth round, we saw Islam kind of staring up at the clock, being like, when is this round going to be over? So it's his gas tank for me. That's his biggest weakness. After that, we have Leon Rocky Edwards of the 170 pound division. Leon's another guy that's pretty good everywhere. You could say his wrestling isn't great, but he did well against Usman in the wrestling. His takedown defense has improved massively. Out-wrestled Colby Covington, although that wasn't the Colby that we're used to. I do think that he does have a clear-ish weakness. For him, it's his cardio and his chin. His chin, he did get rocked by Nate Diaz. We saw, I know that that was a little, I know that that was a little while ago, and it's not to Leon Edwards that we've seen now, but I think that his chin is a little, little bit suspect. If he came up against a sniper, like an elite, elite striker, like we see in Sean O'Malley, like we see in some of the other snipers that we have in the UFC, like a Conor McGregor, I think that that chin could possibly be hurt, and we have seen him hurt before in fights, and then the next thing is his cardio. 
His cardio looked okay against Usman in London, but in his first fight, it didn't look great. And Colby Covington, we can't really judge because that was a spar. Being being 100%, Colby Covington, Leon was a spar. It's not a test on his cardio. And we did see people saying before that fight, if Colby can set the pace that he usually sets, he might be able to test Leon Edwards. So his biggest flaw for me is his cardio. After that, we have Sean Strickland of the 185 pound division. Obviously, one of the newer champs. And I was trying to, it actually took me a while to think of a weakness for Sean Strickland. Because you might say easily, it's his wrestling. His wrestling's not bad. We've actually seen him wrestle with some of the elite guys in the division. And I don't think that his wrestling is bad. It's Don't get me wrong, it's definitely one of his flaws. But I don't think his wrestling is as bad as people make it out to be. It's just that his striking is so good that when people are trying to see how does Sean Strickland get beat, his striking and his striking defense are so good. The defense is one of the main things with uh, his ability to check leg kicks. We saw that against Izzy. His ability to pull up that Philly shell and defend himself from punches. So the wrestling is definitely one. I'd like to see his jujitsu. We haven't seen a whole lot from his jujitsu. You know what I mean? We haven't seen him go against a real elite, elite jujitsu practitioner. And the next thing is his recklessness. Kind of outside of the cage, kind of inside the cage. You know, he just wants to get in there. He wants to get hit. He doesn't get hit a lot, but, you know, he's not afraid to get hit. He wants to get in there. He wants to have wars. He wants to, you know, go to war with people, strike with people. You know, he's willing to take anything that they're going to give him. And I think it could get you caught. It could get you caught when you're in there with a big striker. Something that has a lot of time to figure you out. After that, we have Pereira. Pereira, 205 is a guy. It's pretty obvious. We all know what his biggest weakness is. Everyone's talked about it. Everyone knows about it. It's the wrestling. If you get him on the ground, you know, his jiu-jitsu, his wrestling, it's not great. Obviously, striking, he's an absolute menace. The leg kicks, the left hook, the punches, the setups, everything is perfect. But once you get him on the ground, it's a different story. We could see him be dominated by a wrestler. That one's pretty easy for me. Alex Pereira, it's got to be the wrestling. And then finally, John Jones, the go to mixed martial arts in my eyes. There's not a lot of big weaknesses for him in his game. Striking's pretty good. Creativeness, wrestling, obviously very good. For me, it's his age. His age is John Jones's biggest weakness. Obviously, his battle against Father Time. That's uh, that's really where his biggest battle is going to come. And I think that, you know, it could, it's kind of catching up to him a little bit. Obviously, against Cyril Gann, he looked great, but he wasn't in the best shape. He wasn't in that kind of John Jones shape that we usually saw him in at 205. So for me, John Jones, it's got to be his age. That's all of the biggest weaknesses for the UFC champions right now. If you like this video, make sure to like, sub, do all that YouTube shit. It really, really does help me out. And let me know, is there any weaknesses that I missed out on? Is there anything that you guys would put in as a weakness that I didn't put in? And I'll catch all you boys tomorrow. Peace.